Hi, welcome to our daily devotionals. My name is Pastor Cassie, and I'm so happy to get to share with you today. Um, this week, we have continued part four in our series, Living on Purpose, where Pastor Frank shares the key is to becoming a disciple whose life is driven toward serving the Lord and fulfilling his purpose for us. This week, he shared some amazing things. And one thing that stood out to me specifically was selfishness never produces what it promises. That statement was just striking to me and it really captivated my attention. And so that's what I want to share on. But if you have not already seen our sermon from this Sunday, please go check that out either on Facebook or on YouTube and give that a like and enjoy the message because it was wonderful. But today I want to talk about this idea of selfishness never producing what it promises. Pastor Frank shared that and it was incredible. And I really hope to be the type of person who does what I say I will do. That dependability and consistency is hard to find. And I pray every day that the Lord will help me to be the type of person who follows through. That's very important to me. And the reason, as Pastor Frank shared, that we don't follow through on things is because of our selfish ambition, our selfish motivation inside of us saying there is something more important for me to accomplish than to follow through on what I promised. So how can we break the selfishness? It seems as though that's a little extreme, but we do this in our everyday lives, even just as simple as you say you'll go spend time with someone, but decide to stay home instead without following through on these small things. Now, once in a while, it's okay to take a step back and take care of yourself, but a habit of not following through on our word can be really detrimental to our witness and our relationships and even our relationship with the Lord. So how can we break this chain of selfishness? The verse that we looked at for this Sunday was Philippians 2, and this scripture talks about Paul's perspective on being like Jesus and how we can be more like Jesus. And Philippians 2, 3 through 4 says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. I mean, that's as, as straightforward as it can get. The Lord does not want us to be selfish. And part of selfishness is trying to impress others or trying to fulfill our own needs. These are all different facets of selfishness. But the following verses explain what the antithesis of this looks like. He says, be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. Don't look only out for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. So he shares with us two ways that we can break the cycle of selfishness. And the first way is to be humble. And I love that he explains this as thinking of others as better than yourself. It doesn't mean thinking the least of yourself or thinking like you're a terrible person, but it's saying to elevate other people in your perspective. Position your heart to think highly of others and to think, wow, they are so wonderful. I honor them. And in that way, lowering yourself. And he he shares this verse in the sermon on Sunday about Jesus washing the disciples' feet in John 13. That is incredible. Just imagine our Savior on his hands and knees cleaning the dirt and the mud off of your feet. We are completely unworthy, yet this is how Jesus teaches us humility. But this is also what Paul is saying is how we are meant to break selfishness in ourselves. Yes, serving other people blesses their souls. It blesses their lives and it helps us to love people better. But it also allows us to remain humble in the presence of God. By getting down on our hands and knees and lowering ourselves to elevate someone else, we are remaining humble and unselfish. And that's amazing because it's a very tangible way to accomplish this. It's hard to to reposture your own heart. You can't. We can't just say, okay, today I'm going to be more humble. No, because it's a process. And as humans, I think that we need to tangibly, physically accomplish something in order to learn a lot of the time. And so by getting down on our hands and knees and serving in the dirt and in the dust allows us to reposition our hearts. When I was in high school, my Christian club would often go to ba- basketball games and football games, and we would just clean up the, the bleachers afterward. And if you've ever been to a high school football game and walked through the bleachers afterward, it is disgusting. And that's all I can say. It's gross. And so to put yourself in the position to pick up 
whatever it is that people left on their bleachers, you're humbling yourself in that way, elevating others in order to break the cycle of selfishness. And we all need to serve in these ways in order to really reposition our hearts. The second thing that he says is don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. That is valuable especially in the culture that we live in today in America, in the Silicon Valley, in the 21st century, it's very easy for us to look out for our own interests. I know for myself, you know, I wake up in the morning and I only think about myself. I think about, do I have to get dressed? Do I have to get ready? Where do I want to go today? Do I want to get coffee? You know, I, I spend the first two, three hours of my day only thinking about myself unless I reposture my heart on purpose and make a tangible physical change in order to get there. So spending the first few hours in prayer for people, have a list of people so that you can see who am I going to pray for today? How am I going to reposition myself to serve someone today? What are the interests of others that I can serve today? This is a great way to reposition our hearts to be unselfish. And I think that selfishness has almost become a cuss word in our society. And it's not. We just need to realize that if we're selfish, it's not us slandering our own reputation. But it's just a good thing to recognize that I am selfish. I do think of myself so often. So if I can tangibly humble myself and and serve other people and and remind myself to think of other people's interests first, then I'll be able to break this cycle every single day and get in the right place to love other people. And this makes me think of the verse that Jesus shares as the most important commandment when the Pharisees ask him, what is the most important commandment? And he says, love the Lord your God and love others as yourself. That's so powerful. And if we really want to break this cycle of selfishness, we just have to remember we are serving God. And when we love others, we're loving them the way that we would love ourselves. This helps us. We, we don't always love ourselves that well, and we, always, we don't always love others that well. So having these in tandem helps us see we need to treat everybody a little better, and that starts with thinking of others first and humbling ourselves. So I hope that you enjoyed this, and I hope that you have a wonderful week. I'm going to pray for you right now because this is a valuable thing that I think we all need to learn, and I do too. Lord, we thank you so much for your presence, and we thank you for everybody who tunes into these daily devos every day. God, I pray that they get something out of it every single day that they tune in this week, and God, that your mighty hand would be on us to remind us to think of others first, to humble ourselves in order to serve and live our lives on purpose for you. In your name, amen. Thank you for tuning in. Again, if you didn't see the sermon this Sunday, go check that out on YouTube or on Facebook, and we'll see you in our next daily devo. Bye.